Hello, my name is Peter Lawrence, and I'm pleased to introduce the December issue of the Journal of Vascular Surgery, and to highlight four outstanding papers which are freely available for the next two months. Our CME article for this issue is Surgical Management of Pediatric Renin-Mediated Hypertension, Secondary to Renal Artery Occlusive Disease and Abdominal Aortic Coarctation by Don Coleman and authors. They reported their institution's experience over 25 years with renin-mediated hypertension in children. The patients included those with renovascular hypertension due to congenital renal artery stenosis and occlusion, as well as aortic coarctations and stenoses that affected the functioning of renal arteries. They recommended that proximal renal artery stenosis and hypoplasia should be repaired with reimplantation into a normal or patched aorta. When needed, a bypass of the renal artery should be performed with autogenous hypogastric artery to avoid aneurysmal degeneration of a saphenous vein graft, which occurs in children. Using this approach, there was no operative mortality, no renal failure requiring dialysis, and the long-term patency was high with only 20% requiring reintervention over a mean of four years post-procedure. And no patients required later dialysis and hypertension was improved or cured in over 90% of patients. Our editor's choice article is titled Extended Screening Guidelines for Diagnosis of Abdominal Aortic Aneurysm by Carnival and colleagues. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force guidelines are the most widely used criteria for screening for abdominal aortic aneurysm, but the Society for Vascular Surgery has expanded the criteria for aneurysm screening to capture more AAAs before rupture. They identified 55,197 patients undergoing abdominal aortic aneurysm repair in the VQI, or Vascular Quality, initiative with 44,602 endovascular and 10,595 open repairs. These authors studied post-treatment AAA patients who would have been identified by screening criteria in each guideline. The USPTF guidelines would have identified less than one-third of patients. Applying the SVS guidelines increased the number meeting screening criteria by 6 and 12 percent for endovascular and open repair. And adoption of the expanded SVS weak recommendations guidelines would have identified an additional 34 percent of EVAR and 21 percent of open aneurysm repair patients. Of those who did not meet the screening criteria, ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm was twice, twice as prevalent as those who met them, that is 8.5% versus 4.4%. The authors concluded that expanding the USPSTF guidelines to include the expanded SVS criteria would double the number of patients identified with abdominal aortic aneurysms. The next article by Ramirez and colleagues is Natural History of Acute Pediatric Iliofemoral Artery Thrombosis Treated with Anticoagulation. The IFAT problem occurs in critically ill neonates and infants who require an indwelling arterial cannula for monitoring or cardiac catheterization. The study characterized thrombus resolution to determine appropriate anticoagulation duration and frequency needed for surveillance. 54 limbs with acute IFAT occurred at a median age of 9.9 weeks. 65% were identified by a diminished pedal Doppler signal after cardiac catheterization. 89% of limbs had complete arterial occlusion, and at 30 days, 64% of patients treated with anticoagulation had complete thrombus resolution. There was no tissue loss or amputation in these patients. Based on the rate of resolution, the authors recommend that immediate anticoagulation 
should be followed by ultrasound at two-week intervals and that resolution can be expected to occur in one-third of patients every two weeks. The final article by Malios and co-authors is Midterm Results of Percutaneous Arteriovenous Fistula Creation with the Ellipsis Vascular Access System, Technical Recommendations, and an Algorithm for Maintenance. Between 2017 and 2019, 234 patients underwent a percutaneous AV fistula with technical success in 99% and in an average of 15 minutes per procedure. At 252 days, the one-year primary, primary assistant, and secondary patency were 54, 85, and 96% respectively. There were no adverse events and only 1% required later conversion to a surgical fistula. However, 10% required superficialization of outflow veins. And the average maturation time was four weeks, although 6% had very early cannulation at less than two weeks. The December issue of the JVS also contains an end of the year message from myself and Dr. Peter Glavitsky and an acknowledgement of all the reviewers who contributed to the JVS in 2020. Thank you for watching. For more information, please follow us on social media and remember to like, comment, and share. We hope you enjoy these four highlighted papers and the other excellent papers in this month's Journal of Vascular Surgery. And remember that these articles are free to read until the end of February. And thanks for your attention.